welcome to Food for Thought, the place to explore, celebrate, and manifest a life motivated and defined by unconditional compassion and optimal wellness. Today's episode is aphrodisiac foods and love potions. Before we begin, my name is Colleen Patrick Goudreau. You can find me at joyfulvegan.com on social media. You can find my books wherever books are sold, and you can join me in my online cooking classes. If you ever miss a live cooking class, like for instance, my aphrodisiac foods cooking class, you can always get yourself a copy of the on-demand class that includes the video recording and recipes. This podcast is possible because of the support of listeners like you. And you can join other supporters by going to patreon.com slash Colleen Patrick Goudreau to become a supporter today at your chosen level. So thank you so much in advance for supporting, for subscribing, and for listening to Food for Thought. I thought it would be fun to talk about this topic of aphrodisiac foods because it is fun. (laughs) And there's also science that backs it up, even if it didn't. It's fun. We're going to talk about color and food and the sensual aspect of food. We're going to talk about history. We're going to talk about folklore. So this is kind of one of my favorite kinds of topics that combines so many different things. Derived from the name of the goddess of love, Aphrodite, many foods and beverages are considered to have aphrodisiac qualities, those which provide amorous inspiration for bewitching and beguiling your beloved. I'm speaking in euphemisms a bit in case there are any kitties who might be listening. Kitties with a D, not with a T. Kitties, cat, cat, cat. I almost said cats. <laughs> in case there are cats listening, we don't want them to hear this. Kids, children, uh, but this is all about love and this is all about affection. So let's let's go on. The body is a complex organism to be sure, but in many ways, its needs are simple. Whittling it down, you've heard me say this before, a healthy body is all about blood flow. Blood flowing through the arteries to get to all the places it needs to go easily and without hindrance. If blood can't flow to our heart, we may have a cardiac arrest. If blood can't flow to our brain, we may have a stroke. If blood can't flow to our nether regions, performance may be hindered. Need I say more? It's all about blood flow. And we tend to think of rich, decadent foods when we're creating a menu for a special anniversary, for holidays like Valentine's Day, or just a romantic dinner. And so if we were thinking about blood flow, we would be better off focusing on foods that encourage blood flow, such as plant foods, rather than on things that hinder blood flow, such as animal products. Now, if you look at any menu of any restaurant for Valentine's Day, it is thick, rich, animal-based, cream-based sauces, soups, meals, main dishes. That is not going to help anything when it comes to blood flow. Each time we eat, we have the choice to consume substances that hinder this blood flow or help it. And we know, we know for certain, 100%, that animal products, meat, dairy, and eggs, hinder blood flow by constricting blood vessels, decreasing blood flow, and thus potentially decreasing the libido. Plant foods, on the other hand, right, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains, legumes, you know, beans and lentils, mushrooms, herbs and spices, all increase blood flow. And some plant foods even more than others, and we'll talk about that more in a bit, hot peppers and garlic, for instance. And because a healthy libido is all about blood flow, it's safe to say that all plant foods are aphrodisiac foods. Now, I know that's a bit generalized, so what about narrowing that down? Thank you very much. Well, sure, I can do that. So for thousands of years, and I'm gonna, that's, that's as general as you can get, plant foods. And then we're going to talk in other categories. So we'll talk about the different sensual uh, categories, sensory categories, and then we'll talk about some specific foods. So for thousands of years, various plant foods have been eaten for their aphrodisiac qualities, inspired by their internal effects or by their sensory characteristics, how they look, how they taste, how they sound, how they feel 
and how they smell. By focusing on the sensual aspects of food, literally of the senses, you can create a romantic meal for any occasion, especially a special romantic occasion. So let's look at color first. Some of these effects are strictly visual. The color red, for instance, has always been associated with passion, with heat, and love, and can be found, of course, on romantic menus in the form of beets, cherries, cranberries, or strawberries, right? The pomegranate has long symbolized fertility. And when we're talking about what something looks like, so aside from color, if we're talking about a particular shape, <laughs> that alludes to something else. Um, the asparagus has long been enjoyed as an aphrodisiac food because of its shape, right? So for back in ancient Romans considered the asparagus an aphrodisiac food. And in fact, in the 19th century in France, bridegrooms were required to eat several courses of asparagus because of its reputed powers to arouse. Now, if any of you have the olfactory reaction to asparagus after you've eaten it, again, euphemisms, <laughs> um, I can't see why asparagus is an aphrodisiac food, but in terms of its shape, there you go. A texture. Some aphrodisiacs are considered uh, aphrodisiacs because of their texture and their taste. So for instance, agave nectar, which is derived from a cactus-like plant native to Mexico, oozes a thick, sweet syrup, right? So that viscosity is very sensual because of the texture of it. The romantic effect of champagne seems to have more to do with the feel of the bubbles in our mouth than with the alcohol. And so sparkling juices, sparkling sodas are also options and will have the same effect. The juiciness of apricots and mangoes and peaches and tomatoes, aka love apples, have earned them a place in the list of sensual foods because of their texture as well. Think succulents. Next, when we think about the heat of a food, of course, we are talking about temperature and we're also talking about spiciness. So that can have a powerful effect. So we'll talk about chili powder and chili peppers and jalapeno peppers and cayenne. All of that has the effect of warming our bodies from the inside, obviously, uh, both from a temperature perspective, but also from that spicy uh, perspective. So we'll talk more about that when we get specifically to chili peppers. Aromas and sounds. Certain aromas have a definite arousing effect. And depending on your preference, you might choose floral. Like hot, you can infuse uh, rose oil in hot water. Uh, you might choose sweet, like cinnamon sticks immersed in cocoa. You might choose earthy, like cloves or bergamot. Um, everybody's different. Everyone has a different preference. So those are some ways you can go about increasing um, the aphrodisiac effect through aromas. And don't underestimate the allure of sounds, the crackling of a fire, the babbling of a brook, and the sound of your beloved's voice could be enough to enhance the romantic mood. Aside from these external attributes, many foods really do cause physical changes in the body, both positive and negative, making them either ideal for a romantic meal or destined to crush the romance. So there's specific research, scientific research, um, that has been done on lots of foods. And there's much more to do to separate fact from folklore. But there really is no denying that both the internal and the uh, sensory effects of foods are a real thing. Now, again, some of this is just fun. If you know, is, is there scientific proof that red foods, you know, increase the libido? No, but does not matter? So <laughs> like, that's still fun, and it's still pleasurable. But where we do see physical internal changes in the body f from eating certain foods, some of it does have to do with naturally occurring chemicals that create a reaction in the body. And some of it, as I already indicated, has to do with the visual, tactile, gustatory, olfactory, and oral appeal, A-U-R-A-L, that which we hear, right? How foods taste, how they feel, how they sound, how they smell, how they look, right? So that's all real, <laughs> but there are some specific foods that do 
create a physiological change in our body. So let's talk about both. Let's talk about some specific foods that are, both create these changes in our libido, in our physiology, both from a scientific chemical perspective, but also just from a sensory, a sensory perspective. So we mentioned agave already. Um, so, and many of you are familiar with agave. If you're vegan, you know, I do think it's a sexier nectar uh, when you consider the fact that honey uh, is fermented in and then regurgitated from bees' stomachs. So I, I would choose agave in terms of <laughs> not only the vegan aspect of it, but just uh, that's just a little more pleasant to me. I don't know about you. Uh, I mentioned champagne, that uh, it's the bubbles usually, but make sure with any kind of alcohol, if obviously you consume too much, uh, I, it's best to heed Shakespeare's words. It can provoke and unprovoke. It provokes the desire, but it can take away the performance. Shakespeare said that. I didn't say that. So next, let's talk about chili peppers, jalapeno, any kind, cayenne pepper, dilating the blood vessels. Cayenne pepper, and really any hot pepper, increases blood flow throughout the body. And as we said, a healthy libido is all about increased blood flow. When many of us think about Valentine's Day or romantic dinner or just wanting to give something to our romantic partner, we often think of chocolate. There are hundreds of chemicals in chocolate and there's one in particular called, I'm going to see if I can get this right, phenylethylamine, phenylethylamine. And it is a chemical that apparently arouses the same feelings we experience when we're in love. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. <laughs> so just chocolate, yay. And you can find many episodes and much that I've written about the fact that, yes, chocolate is vegan. Chocolate is from the cacao plant. It is a plant-based food. It's only not vegan when you add cow's milk to it, such as in, you know, your typical milk chocolate. There are milk chocolate bars these days with plant-based milks, but I'm sure they're harder to find. But really, in the end, the best you can do, and I'm sure in terms of the concentration of these chemicals uh, in chocolate, is to get dark chocolate, and that's pretty much it. So you might like a little bit of sugar if you don't like it too bitter, but definitely dark chocolate is the way to go in terms of quality and also in terms of uh, these chemicals and the and the kind of nutrition aspects of it, for sure. The antioxidants that are in chocolate go dark, go as dark as possible. And we'll talk more about zero waste chocolate in a different episode, specifically about zero waste gifts for Valentine's Day. Cinnamon. In ancient Rome, the word cinnamon was equivalent to the current use of sweetheart or darling. How adorable is that? So you can call your, your partner cinnamon. I think that would be lovely. Remember the song of Solomon in the Bible? It, it goes, I've perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love till morning. So if you want a little love poem there, definitely the Song of Solomon is 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 one to choose. Uh, ginseng is a Korean uh, herb. Uh, it increases blood flow to the nether regions, so science says. Uh, and it's also been shown in clinical trials to improve desire and arousal in both men and women. Pine nuts. The Roman poet Ovid included pine nuts in his list of aphrodisiacs. And the perfumed garden, it's an ancient Arabic love manual, prescribed pine nuts for restoring a man's vigor. So pine nuts, I love that. Saffron. Saffron, saffron, saffron is so special. Yes, it's expensive. A little goes a long way. Oh, how I love saffron. So for my Valentine's Day aphrodisiac foods cooking class, we did do or will do, depending on when you're listening to this, but you can always get the on-demand class. We, the main dish is a saffron-based filling that goes into our phyllo dough. And for another class recently, I did my saffron spiked Moroccan stew, which you can also find in the vegan table. So saffron, just it's so special. And recent clinical studies indicate that it may indeed be a natural Viagra. Less potent, to be sure, but with none of the side effects. Try it. Saffron. Tomatoes, 
uh, referred to as the love apple by the French because of a language barrier rather than by its aphrodisiac qualities, but still it's called the love apple and that's enough to perhaps um, just, you know, just inspire. This uh, seed-filled fruit, kind of like the pomegranate, deserves inclusion for its its juiciness. The seeds, uh, again, represent fertility. The juiciness is the the succulents. And of course, there's various shapes and sizes and colors. Because caffeine and heat in terms of spiciness as well as temperature uh, increase circulation of the blood, hot drinks such as tea, as coffee, uh, cocoa, mulled wine, or cider, they're also wonderful ways to heat things up from the inside out. And so let's talk more about beverages when it comes to concocting elixirs. I love the word elixir. I don't think we use it enough. In terms of concocting elixirs for a romantic meal. Uh, the options are endless. As with the foods, think of color and texture and aroma and taste. Here are some ideas. I just mentioned the caffeine uh, and, the, and the heat uh, from hot beverages. So just consider hot beverages. That alone would, uh, would be something to include. And you can add the juice of pomegranates, raspberries, cranberries, strawberries, cherries to sparkling mineral water, or to lemon-lime soda, or to sparkling wine, so you get some of those gorgeous red colors. Uh, Add any of the above fruits to any drink you create, whatever it is, add those wonderful red fruits. Adorn the base of the glasses with red pears, red apples, obviously red-skinned apples, red-skinned pears, red currants, red grapes, watermelon, or goji berries, right? So again, get that color red in there. Uh, Serve red wine, or tomato juice, or add grenadine, which is a sweet syrup made from pomegranate seeds to sparkling water. So red, red, red can be used for beverages as well as for foods. Heat, I mentioned the chilies before, that Mexican hot chocolate, I have a recipe for it in the Joy of Vegan Baking. Not only do you have a hot beverage, but you also have it spicy because of the added chili powder. So that's something to do for dessert. You, you can make my Mexican chocolate cake that's in the 30 Day Vegan Challenge. Hello, you've got chocolate, you've got the spicy uh, chili powder and the cayenne. So you've got that combination again of chocolate. And same thing with the Mexican hot chocolate. You've got heat, you've got chocolate, and you've got the chili peppers. Uh, For the beverage, the hot chocolate, you can add Kahlua for some extra warmth. Uh, So I mentioned hot drinks, mold, or, you know, which is spiced wine or cider is wonderful, but you don't have to spice it if you don't want to. Uh, Then there are certain herbs and spices and flowers that are said to increase the libido. Is it true? I don't know, but you can always add these to your menu, and many of these are available in stores, or you can prepare some of these yourself. Uh, Damiana is an herb that grows in Mexico and South America, and it's long been considered an aphrodisiac. There's uh, Damiana liquor, which comes in a bottle shaped like an Incan goddess. You can find that in many stores, in many liquor stores. Aniseed and licorice, they both uh, have very similar flavors. They've been touted for their special love powers for centuries. So anise, anise seed and licorice. Anise is that wonderful seed and fennel as well that have that licorice flavor. You can add a stick of licorice to a creamy after dinner drink. You can enjoy a glass of Sambuca, uh, an Italian anise flavored liqueur. So go down that road as well. And then any drink made with guava, chocolate, agave, almond, vanilla, or passion fruit, any of those are bound to inspire tingles upon consumption. So create your menus around that. I would often make something like a red soup. I have a spicy red bell pepper soup. So again, you've got that heat. It's a hot soup. You've got the spiciness because it's spicy. There's cayenne. And then you've also got the color red. So consider starting with a soup. Consider starting with something with red. Um, My polenta, I you know I love my polenta. And once it sets up, you can either cut it into, of course, squares, but you can also use a cookie cutter and make heart shapes. And I think that's a really lovely uh, main dish for Valentine's Day or for a romantic meal. 
You can also carry that heart theme even further by featuring hearts of palm, hearts of celery, romaine hearts or artichoke hearts, right? So that's another way to go as well. The idea is also to excite, not overload or dull the senses. So consider that when I mentioned alcohol and also consider that I, let's see, how shall I say this? I might not make beans or lentils, the main dish. Does that make sense? (laughs) So yeah, just don't, I would just, because not everybody is going to digest the beans and the lentils well, and you don't know if you will or your partner will. So I would just kind of leave beans and lentils and things that would typically cause gas and bloating off the romantic menu. You know what I mean? So the idea is just have fun with it. Whether it's scientifically based or not, who cares? Have fun, right? Our heart, the symbol of this romantic holiday or any romantic escapade or dinner or meal together is the organ most likely to suffer from our indulgent food choices. It affects our intimate relationships in very real, tangible ways when we are negatively affected by the food choices we make. Decades of research indicates that diabetes, heart disease, certain types of cancer, and decreased libido are strongly linked to an animal-based diet. After all, animal products constrict the blood vessels, whereas plant foods do not. But delicious sensual recipes abound that satisfy our spirits, that nurture our bodies, that delight our palates. I truly cannot think of a better Valentine to give our loved ones than to serve food that heals rather than harms, food that's life-giving rather than life-threatening or life-taking, and food born of compassion rather than violence. When our daily choices reflect our deepest values, our hearts quite literally expand. How's that for an aphrodisiac? Have fun. Let me know what you do. Well, don't let me know what you do. I don't want details, but let me know what kind of meal you create. I'd love more ideas from you. Remember, don't do nothing because you can't do everything. Do something, anything. For the animals, this is Colleen Patrick-Gaudreau. Thanks for listening. 